How much time do you spend editing your photos in order to just show them to your model or your friends and family? After calling the rejects, which I demonstrated how to do quickly in a previous video, you still may end up spending a lot of time preparing the images to a level that you are comfortable with showing them to other people. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could potentially cut hours from your digital workflow and get your images ready to preview faster than ever before. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and I've been doing photography for over 30 years. I teach beginner and intermediate photographers like yourself how to improve their photography and how to improve your digital workflow. One of the major stumbling points, especially if you're new to photo processing, is knowing when to stop and how much to edit an image. So what I'm going to demonstrate for you in this tutorial is what level to take your images to in order to show them to the model just for having them make their selections and how to do it much faster. Are you ready? Let's get to it. If you've already watched my previous video on how to call images faster to pick the best images from a session, you'll recognize some of these images and my beautiful model petal. For today's purposes, I'm using Lightroom to demonstrate because that's where I archive and sort most of my images. If you're using Luminar or something else on one, even Apple Photos, you can do the same technique. All you need to know is how to copy and paste settings from one image to the other or to sync settings. So whichever software you're using, you could follow along with the demonstration. I've gone ahead and blocked off my images into collections based on each different type of pose. Now I sectioned off these first ones because the ones that I marked in red were shot without flash and then the next set was shot with added flash. So I knew that the lighting and probably the color balance would be a little bit different. So every time I had a new pose, I blocked it off with a new color and this is just for visual reference so I can easily show you where I'm starting and stopping on a set. What I'm going to do is take one of these collections and process them to the level that I call preview quality. Okay, so this is not finished editing. I'm not doing any additional facial retouching or removing of objects. Those will be done on the, the final selections made by the model. Okay, so that may only be six to eight or 10 images. I'm not going to do all 100 to that level. Okay, so this is an interim step between from the camera to preview and before final edit. So what I do is I'm just gonna open this first one and I have a number of Lightroom presets that I've created which are available for sale on my website right here if you want to check those out. And my presets are designed to do basic things. The ones that I use the most are things like edge vignette. So I have several presets that you can see what they do if you just hover the mouse over. So I want to darken the edges first to bring the eye into the center of the image. Some of the other ones I have are for sharpening, noise reduction, skin enhancement, and so on. They're all basic edits. So what we're doing to this at this stage would be great to use those to apply to your images if you're using Lightroom. The next thing I'm going to do is change the camera profile. I shot these on Vivid and I think the colors are just a little bit too vibrant. So I'm going to change it to Astia, which is a Fuji profile. And I'm doing this edit fairly quickly because I have some other videos on using Lightroom to process your images. And I don't wanna to focus too much on the actual how to's in Lightroom, as opposed to you know the actual, what it looks like to this level, I'm processing it before I take it into the next stage. So if you want to learn more about the basic sliders and adjustments in Lightroom, click the video here now, or in the link in the description below. Okay, so this one I'm just adjusting so that I have the white and the black point, which gives it a bit more contrast. And you can see my before and after just with adding the vignette is already doing some nice things. And I'm gonna do one more little vignette to darken the edges except her, but I'm gonna do it with a radial filter. Okay, if you've never used radial filters in Lightroom, they are amazing and I use a ton of them. It's basically a little circle vignette that you can move around and resize, right? I have a video on radio filters as well. You can click here. 
Uh, also have one on graduated filters, which are, these are local adjustment tools. Okay, so I'm only applying this to the outside because I want to darken the highlights only on the outside and bring the attention in more towards her, like so. That actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm happy with the cropping. I don't see anything else that I want to do here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up the little thumbnails at the bottom here, is I'm gonna select all these ones that I have highlighted in red. You can see, I'll just make them a little bigger, right? So I'm highlighting all these ones in the same series. And then I'm just going to click Sync. Okay, so Sync, I'm going to check all, allows you to choose in Lightroom which settings you want to copy and then synchronize to the other images. So I could do copy and paste, but synchronize does it quicker, or just does all of them at the same time. So check your software to see if it has something similar. All right, now I'm gonna go back to, you can see how quickly that happened. I'm just gonna go back to grid view and just kind of cycle through them really quickly to see if there's anything that I need to adjust. So I can see that a few of them are a little bit dark. So I'm just gonna go one by one. And this one was a little bit darker. So it looks like that first image was a little bit overexposed. So when I copied the settings from this one, it made the other images a little overly dark. So I'm just gonna undo that. And you can also check the position of your radio filter because if the subject moved or if I moved the camera, so I'm just gonna make some slight adjustments. Now I made some small adjustments to this one and this next one is pretty similar. It's a little bit dark as well. So instead of changing this one, I can actually just click previous or I could copy and paste from the last image once again. Okay, now remember this is not aiming to be perfect. It's aiming to be good enough for her to look at the images so she needs to be a proper color. She needs to be a proper density or brightness in terms of luminosity and any kind of basic adjustments so that she can see clearly her expression and that it's an image that she may want to um, choose, right? So this one, I'm gonna move around a little bit. So you can see that she moved a little bit or I moved the camera a little bit and that's the disadvantage of the radio filters when you're copy and pasting in Lightroom is that if the subject's in a different place, it doesn't know that, so you have to manually adjust it. But you can see how quickly I've done the first image and now I've just copied and pasted. I'll make this one a little darker. Now I've copied and pasted and I've done all eight images. So let's have a look. The next thing I do is I compare them really quickly. So I'm just gonna get rid of that thumbnails and just check for density to make sure, again, the luminosity of each one, the brightness looks equal so that they look the same, the color balance looks the same and anything that I've done in terms of the radio filters. It looks consistent across the eight. So I'm calling these ones done. The next set I'm going to do is in a different location and a different clothing change. So everything is different, the lighting, the atmosphere, and the colors. So I'm gonna do the same thing with these. Starting with the first one, I'm just going to change the color profile. And in this case, the camera profile was uh, vivid, and I might actually stay with that. Because this image is fairly monochrome, um, it's gonna add a little bit more punch to the image overall in terms of color. You'll notice that there is a softbox or an umbrella because I used off-camera flash here. Um, a lot of my images that I'm using, and it will become more apparent when I edit this one, do use off-camera flash. So it's, it's connected using a remote and it's in an umbrella. If you want to learn more about flash, I have a series of flash articles on my website. Click the link in the upper right corner now, or you can click the link in the description area below the video. So I'm going to do the same kinds of things here, but I'm gonna crop this one a little bit because I wanna get rid of that umbrella. And I kinda of wanna get rid of the top of the bridge. So this is a really interesting bridge in our city. Uh, it gets used a lot because it's interesting shape-wise, architecturally. So I wanna crop that bridge um, a little bit and crop that umbrella out. Give it a little bit more punch. 
And now what I want to do in this case is I'm actually going to darken the overall image because I want the background to be fairly dark. And when I put the radio filter on, I'm going to actually lighten her. So I'm going to use the radio filter this time on the inside of the circle to light her up even more. Okay, so just a quick before and after. You can see that what it's doing is it's kind of punching her up, making her stand out, and then a final edge vignette. So see how handy these presets are because I'm literally just clicking that on the end there and it adds the dark vignette on the edges. Okay. Once again, let's get the whole set. So I'm going to choose all the green ones. I'm going to choose sync, everything. Now keep in mind that I've cropped this image. Okay, So when I sync, if I crop, it's going to crop them all. Okay? If you don't want the crop to apply, just uncheck that one. So make sure that when you're syncing, you choose the settings that you want to copy and paste to all of them. Taking a look back in the grid view, I'm going to look at these overall because right out of the gate, look at that. She didn't really move that much and the cropping looks pretty good on all of them. I think what I'll just do is just do a really quick flip through. Oh, I missed an umbrella there. So we can just move that one or crop that one a little bit more. But otherwise, it looks like they are all pretty good. So one quick copy or sync, and I managed to then edit 12 images in a couple of minutes. So I'm not taking two to five minutes per image. I'm taking two to three minutes on the first one, syncing, and then maybe a couple of more minutes on the rest of them. I'm going to do one more quick set here. I've got 10 different blocks or collections of images in this photo session, and I want to show you this one um, as a close up because I want to show you to what level I will do the editing on close-ups like this. This one, because it's all light, I might actually choose to do a light vignette and keep it high key, or I can choose to keep a darker vignette. Totally uh, artist choice. Let me just make these thumbnails a bit smaller. All right, so I'm doing the same little tricks again. Once again, these are in my video on the basic sliders in Lightroom, and I'm going to leave the image this dark Right? Because once again, I'm going to add a radio filter. If you are using Luminar AI, you can actually do this much quicker and you don't have to move it around because there's a slider under the portrait tools called face light and it finds the face and, and basically add, like adds a light to the face for you. Like you've added a reflector. It's brilliant. And then when you sync it across Luminar files, all the faces get lit, even if she's in a different position. It's wonderful. So this one, I'm doing fairly straightforward. Um, I might take a little bit of yellow out. She looks a little bit on the yellow side. Let's give her a little more pink, something about like that. I always check my before and after, but you'll notice that when I zoom in, I'm not doing any fine facial retouching. I'm not worrying about stray hairs. I'm not brightening the eyes or removing any blemishes, which she doesn't have. Um, I'm just doing basic edits, which is color, contrast, and brightness. That's it. Okay. So once again, I'm going to sync. And I don't think I cropped. Okay. They look fairly straightforward. Again, I'll just flip through them to make sure there's no density changes. Okay. So this one looks like it's a little brighter. I might do a little tweak on this one. Maybe add a little darker vignette. And then once again, oops, aha, see, I had them all selected still. So if you say, if you get the sync button coming up, it means you've got multiple selected. If you see previous, it means you just have the one selected. So about like that. So once again, just double check them all. I'm looking for consistency in color, brightness, and contrast here. They look pretty good. So I'm going to go back to the start and process the rest of these images to the same level. And I'm going to do it real time with a timer. So we'll speed it up so it goes real fast so that you can see how long it takes me to edit these 98 photos. But before I start, I want you to make a guess. How long do you think it's going to take me to go through these 98 images and process them to the level of being ready for preview? 
Do you think I could do it in under an hour? Put your guess in the comment area below. Then after I'm done, see how close you got. Are you ready? Here we go. And stop. 25 and a half minutes. So if you include the roughly 11 minutes that I spent demonstrating the first few sets to you, my total editing time is about 36 minutes. So that's about 20 seconds per image on average. Not bad, hey? Let me get rid of this timer and show you how the images look consistent. So what I'm looking for when I'm finished is a set of images that look like this. And I make the thumbnail smaller so that I can see the images sort of all together. You can see that each one, they all match in terms of color, density, brightness, contrast. She stands out. You can see her in every single picture. She looks about the same brightness. And that's what I'm looking for is really good, consistent processing across the board so that she is able to then go through them one by one, see her face and expression clearly and pick her favorites. Saving time is important to everyone. Couldn't you use more time? In regards to photo editing, speeding up your processing time, as you've seen in this video, is always a great idea. But it actually starts at the beginning of your workflow when you're choosing the best images to work with. Watch this video now to see my pro tip on culling images or how to choose the best ones faster. Or click the video right below it to see my complete portrait retouching process from start to finish to complete the images.